If you can share your screen. Mm. Perfect. So our next speaker for today is Kostia Drach from Ex-Marseille Ex University in France. And he's going to talk on how to use box mappings as black boxes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Vasam. And thanks to the organizers for inviting me. I hope that you can hear me well and see my slides. Um, yes. So today I will be talking about, well, as you can see on this slide, uh, how to box something into boxes and use it. And this object will be complex box mappings. So this is uh, joint work with uh, Trevor Clark, Sebastian van Stuyn, Alek Kozlowski, and Dirk Schleicher in various <coughs> parts. So uh, let me start with a picture that uh, probably appeared a couple of times already in this conference. Well, you can see on this slide uh, some part of a parameter space for some rational map. Of course, you should recognize this in Newton map. And, um, and the question is, why do we see here the Mandelbrot set? And as uh, almost all of you know, uh, this is because in the dynamical plane, uh, there is a particular uh, dynamics for the critical orbit. So, uh, which means that if I pick up um, a critical point, see that uh, then uh, it has a, dynamics in the following way. So there's a, some disk that maps to over some other disk with the first iterate of the map. And then this disk returns to some larger disk uh, containing the first one. And while well, the smaller one uh, contains all the uh, all, even iterates of, of the critical point, Uh, so with that respect, once we uh, have this couple of disks, then we are fine. We can study uh, this induced dynamical system sort of with regards to what was happening outside. Uh, and of course, this is a well-known notion of uh, polynomial-like mappings. And here's a slide that uh, reminds you what it is. So it's just a, a, a branch covering between two disks and uh, we can define a Phil Julia set uh, as a set of points that never escapes under the iteration, uh, the inner disk. And of course, the famous straightening theorem by Duadin Hubbard says that, well, in fact, uh, this map is hybrid equivalent um, to an actual polynomial. And if this Phil Julia set is connected, then this, this polynomial is unique. So this is an instance of renormalization uh, of of a dynamical system. Uh, and uh, as you, you saw on this slide, uh, it happens if there is this nice periodic behavior um, of a critical point. But the question is how to construct a more complicated induced dynamical system. If uh, our critical point, well, if there are several critical points or the critical points behave not that nicely. And of course, it's not about it's not only about critical points, but about also about how to fix these disks or union of disks. And the answer to this question is um, the following. We should take a first return map to uh, nice sets. So let me define both of these notions. Um, so let me start a little bit abstractly. I have a holomorphic map between U and V. And we call a set B nice if the forward iterate of the boundary of this set uh, do not, uh, does not intersect the interior of the set. So this is a notion uh, due to Marco Martins and uh, that appears to be very useful in uh, both real and complex dynamics because once you have such a set, uh, such a nice set B, then you um, can, define what is called a first return map to this uh, set B. So suppose for simplicity, this B consists of uh, four uh, topological disks that are disjoint, then uh, what can happen? So how do we define a first return map? So I first uh, pick a point Z in, in B and watch for, for its orbit. 
suppose that after uh, two steps, this this uh, point returns back to to my set B. Well, then I can uh, pull back this disk to which it, the orbit lands um, twice. And uh, what is what will be with this pullback? And this is sort of a trivial observation for people who uh, spend their lives working with first return maps, but it's uh, uh, maybe not that trivial for people who see it for the first time. So when you pull it back, so what can happen? Um, if the pullback intersect the starting disk some, somehow uh, like, like so, then we have a violation to the niceness property because for example, this, pro this point on the boundary will map to some point here. Uh, as, um, uh, uh, so what would I? It would be mapped inside the, the disk. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, correct. Uh, I pick the right point and mark the other one. Yeah, it will be marked inside, exactly. So this situation is impossible, right? So this uh, this situation is impossible because of our niceness condition. And then if we suppose we do not intersect the boundary, again, this situation is impossible because uh, these points on the boundary will be mapped somewhere inside. Therefore, the only situation which is possible because of that niceness is that the pullback uh, can, is contained inside the piece that we started. And for all points in this pullback, after two iterates, we land in the component of B. Of course, it, it can happen that uh, this, this uh, green disk coincides with, uh, with uh, this black one. Uh, so this is not a priori uh, prohibited. And uh, you can see that, in fact, uh, this, this particular dynamics is what we saw on the previous slide uh, with this uh, recurrent critical point. But of course, you can have all possible components of your first return map that map, well, let me just do, do some, um, for example, like so, uh, and so forth. So, and the key point here to observe that uh, a priori, we do not know that we have only uh, finitely many pieces that return, right? So it's possible that we have infinitely many components that return to, to our original set. And this is a typical structure that you should expect uh, for, for, for just a nice set that we just, you've started with. Uh, the plus, of course, uh, if we arrange, for example, that um, the critical set of our map is in B and we, uh, uh, well, for example, we have only finitely many critical points, then uh, all the critical points for the resulting first return map will be exactly the critical points from which we started. And with uh, some luck, and I will comment on this a little bit, we can also arrange that, uh, well, the, uh, the situation is exactly as I drew, so that uh, these components of the first return of the domain of the first return map, they are compactly contained in B. And um, well, this is a structure for what we call complex box mapping. And uh, well, you can see why uh, the definition is like so. So this is a formal definition of what we call a box mapping. So a box mapping is a holomorphic map between two open sets U and V. Uh, U contain, is contained in V, uh, such that this F has only uh, finitely many components. Uh, v is a union of uh, finite, uh, sorry, finite many critical points. Uh, v is a union of finitely many open Jordan disks, well, as, a, as in, in this picture. And then, uh, well, the uh, for every component u of curly u, its image is a some component of curly v, and the map between uh, well, this u and f of u is a proper is a proper map. And uh, the final property is that uh, each uh, every component v uh, of curly v is either a component of u, uh, or uh, the intersection uh, with u is a union 
of Jordan discs uh, with, with pairwise disjoint closure, which are compactly contained in B. Right? And this is, uh, again, the situation here. So this is, for example, a component of U, which is also a component of V, which are possible. And uh, this is uh, uh, just a component of U, which is not a component of V, and hence it should be compactly contained, as it is here in the picture. Um, this object appeared in many situations, uh, well, it, it, it is not new and uh, it was used in various disguises by, by many authors and while well, a couple of names for, for this object uh, are listed here. Um, but I, I hope that I convinced you that this is a structure of a first return map that uh, you should expect. And um, this is a structure where you want to capture interest in part of your dynamics. Uh, let me define a couple of notion related, uh, notions related to this definition. Uh, once we have this uh, box mapping, uh, we can define a puzzle piece uh, to be a connected component of the, of, uh, the full nth image of V. And this N is, is a depth of your puzzle piece. Uh, then I can, similarly to polynomial-like mapping, I can define a field dual asset as a set of points, uh, the set of non-escaping points where I can iterate my map F infinitely many times. And another notion that is quite important, very useful, uh, is the notion of fiber. So, um, let us denote P sub N of X is a puzzle piece of depth N contained in some point X in the dual asset, in the field dual asset. Then the fiber is the intersection of all puzzle pieces uh, that contains this point X. Right, so this is uh, kind of a, a class of points that share all puzzle pieces with respect to this box mapping. And we will say that the fiber is trivial, well, if the fiber is just one point. And uh, one can see that the fiber uh, is a set of points with the same itinerary with respect to this puzzle partition. So these are points. If I start to iterate any of them, I will um, travel through the same puzzle pieces of the same depth uh, for my box mapping. And uh, the interesting observation is that if the fiber is trivial, then the orbit of my point is unique with respect to all possible orbits in box mapping. And therefore, um, triviality of fibers or shrinking of puzzle pieces uh, is the way of expressing that uh, each point has a unique symbolic dynamics with respect to uh, the puzzle partition defined by box mapping. Okay, and here's a simple example of a box mapping. And this is probably uh, from where it all started. Um, let me pick a cubic polynomial. Well, here's an exact formula. Um, it, this cubic polynomial has one critical point that escapes to infinity and one critical point which is periodic. And uh, I can start with, with a set V as well, some, some topological disk. Um, sufficiently large. And then um, if I pull it back, since my critical point escapes, then I, have, I will have two connected components, this and this one, and altogether that defines uh, complex, complex box mapping as a map uh, from, from the union of these pre-images to V. And well, here we have two to one map, and here we have one to one map, and in this picture, you can see that uh, you can see various puzzle pieces, in fact, right? So they, this yellow one is a puzzle piece of depth zero. Then uh, this orange one and this one is a piece of depth one. And well, all the shades of red define finer and finer puzzle pieces. And uh, this black parts are exactly fibers. For example, this big black part is a fiber of uh, minus one. And of course, this is an instance of uh, renormalizable dynamics, but you don't have, you don't have to have uh, that 
renormalization every time. But I hope I give you a flavor how you can define a box mapping in this situation when you have escaping critical point. And um, for example, this is this is a situation how you prove that um, if all critical points escape, then your uh, uh, counter set is uh, uh, then your Julia set is a counter set. Uh, well, in the quadratic case, for example, you, you do exactly this uh, in this way. Um, okay, so, but of course you can construct something more complicated and we will discuss it a little bit later. So what, we can, what can we say about general box mappings? So this is a question, something like in, in, uh, in uh, 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 computer programming. I give you an object and you want to give me like all the possible properties of this object. And in fact, um, with the definition I gave, uh, there are, well, pathologies or bad properties or interesting properties just depending on the, of your point of view. But at least this, this general object has some properties that one should not expect uh, if you start with something globally defined like a rational map. So what are the pathologies that um, we call pathologies? Um, so there's here the theorem that says that um, uh, I will give four examples of box mappings such that the first box mapping is as uh, the property that it's field Julia set is the whole um, domain uh, is, is the range. How, how do you do that? Well, this is actually quite trivial. You take a unit disk and you take your box map, uh, you take your map to be an identity map. But it is not prohibited, strictly speaking, from the definition. Of course, in this example, uh, in, in this disk, none of the points escape under iterations. And you can well, modify it so that there are no, uh, you can modify your map on the disk, um, even allowing critical points. Uh, so this is not surprising. So a priori, this uh, field Julia set is not something that we expect, it's not even compact, as you can see, because V1 is open. Uh, the second um, box mapping has a property that um, uh, that the, Julia, the, the field Julia set has a full Lebesgue measure in the domain. Uh, it has empty interior. And, uh, and there exists a positive, uh, there is ex exists a set uh, of positive measure of points in uh, non-escaping set that does not accumulate at any critical point. And that should be a bit surprising because if you think about uh, some, some polynomial, then you would imagine that if, if your uh, orbit do not come close to a critical set, um, then uh, then the measure of those points should be small, right? It should be sort of a hyperbolic set. Uh, but in fact, uh, in, in the general situation, uh, we cannot rule this out. So this, this situation is, is possible. Uh, the third example is, is a box mapping with a wandering disk, right? So uh, we can construct a box mapping such that V3 is a disk and each component of um, U3, uh, well, is compactly contained in V3 and contains a wandering disk. So the disk that iterates uh, and uh, never returns to itself. And in fact, in this example, the picture looks like so. Uh, this is our V3. And these wandering disks, they uh, they will be sort of non-shrinking disks that goes to to the boundary. Um, and this is something that um, also you, 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 don't, <coughs> you don't want to to expect because usually what what you want to see you want to capture points that return quite often. Uh, to some bounded part of your domain of definition, and this is a, this is a, an example where many points march off to, again to, towards the boundary. And um, final example uh, is 
um, is a slight modification of, oh, is a modification of an uh, example two, uh, which says that we can construct a critic, uh, a box mapping with non-empty critical set so that the set of points uh, in the, the field Julia set um, has, whose boundary converges uh, to, uh, whose orbits uh, converge uh, to the boundary uh, of V4 as full measure. Again, full measure of points converging to the boundary. And uh, this is one of the reasons why you, you would assume this is a pathology, because if you, have ever worked with a, with a, uh, with puzzle pieces, for example, of polynomials. I will remind a bit of it later, but for those who know, uh, the boundary of those puzzle pieces are usually repelling, and therefore you you should not expect that the a positive measure set uh, sort of marches uh, actually converges to to the boundary, right? If your boundary point, if your boundary is is repelling. And therefore, this, these examples, uh, which we call pathologies, uh, motivates us to give a definition of a dynamically natural box mapping. And uh, we say that a, bo a complex box mapping F is dynamically natural if, well, first of all, every component of U contains escaping points, right? So we don't have this, this uh, strange, or well, let's say stupid examples when, when you have disk with uh, which maps to itself or something along these lines. Uh, second is that uh, the Lebesgue measure um, uh, of points in the non-escaping set that do not accumulate at uh, critical fibers is zero, right? In, in positive, we, we, we want that uh, almost all points accumulate uh, to some critical fibers. And finally, uh, the third, third condition is about this bounded part of dynamics. We want uh, that the field Julia set consists of points uh, whose orbits uh, from time to time visit components of U that are well inside of V. So what does it mean? That means that for, uh, for every point X in, in our field Julia set, uh, there exists some delta well, that depends on this point. And there exists some sequence ui, vi of components of uh, this curly u and curly v, uh, such that, first of all, the modulus of vi minus ui is at least delta. That means well inside. And um, the picture should be like so. So this is. Ui, this is um, Vi, and our orbit jumps in Ui, and that should be for uh, infinitely many i's, right? So my orbit can go to the boundary, but it should infinitely often return to those pieces which has some uh, moduli bound. And this model about depends on points, so this is not that strict if you think about it. Um, but in fact, with this uh, dynamical naturality, none of none of the examples that were constructed in, in in the previous theorem are dynamically natural in this setting. Okay, and now let me describe what we have in our black box. So I will present some of the rigidity and ergodicity results for dynamically natural box mappings that, that we have. And then I will show um, in which situation you can use this as a black box so that you don't have to reprove many things. Okay, so the first uh, theorem is about uh, dynamical rigidity as we call it for box mappings. And this is uh, a theorem uh, by uh, uh, Dirk Schleicher and myself, uh, which is a uh, in fact, a generalization of much deeper result of uh, Alec uh, Kozlovsky and Sebastian Panstein, uh, which says the following. Uh, if F is a dynamically natural box mapping, then for every point Z in the non-escaping set, we either have that Z has a trivial fiber or 
z belongs to or is mapped to by some finite iterate to um, to the field Julia set of uh, renormalizable dynamics, which is a polynomial like restriction of F with connected Julia set. Right? So this theorem tells that either our, our uh, for, for our point Z, the orbit is combinatorially distinct from all other point uh, orbits in the uh, field Julia set. This is uh, the synonym of saying that the fiber is trivial, or it lands in some um, polynomial like. Uh, Julia set. And in particular, if you start with something which is non renormalizable, which means that it does not admit uh, this case R, then every fiber is trivial. And all, which means that all, uh, all puzzle pieces shrink to points um, in, in this setup. And um, yeah, I, I should probably mention. Uh, before I move on, that uh, this result of Kozlovsky and von Strin, this is actually a deep um, blend of, of techniques that were developed uh, previously uh, by uh, Kozlovsky, Shen, and von Strin. And this is some combinatorial construction, which is called enhanced nest, and an analytic tool, which is a covering lemma due to Jeremy Kahn and uh, Michalovic. Okay. Um, so that was the first item in a box. The second item, we can actually bound the number of uh, ergodic components for a non-normalizable uh, dynamically natural box mapping. Uh, let me remind you that uh, a set E of positive measure is a, an ergodic component if, uh, well, its pre-image is exactly the same set up to uh, some set of measure zero. So the uh, symmetric difference between the pre-image and the set is uh, of measure zero. And uh, what we can show that, well, a priori, the number of ergodic components can be arbitrary and can be even infinite, but uh, for, for non-realizable dynamically natural box mappings, the number of ergodic component is bounded above by the number of critical points. Um, okay. Uh, that's the second one. Uh, third one, uh, we can say something about line fields for, for box mappings. So what is an invariant line field? Uh, geometrically, this is an assignment of um, for each point Z in uh, the Julia set K of F, it's an assignment of, of, uh, of a line mu of Z uh, such that if, if I uh, consider the image of this point F of Z, uh, there I will have uh, the line mu of f of that. Then uh, invariance means that the uh, the differential of my map uh, maps one line to another. Right. Um, you can think about it equivalently the same as 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 giving you a Beltrami differential, measurable Beltrami differential. Of course, that all makes sense if the Julia set has positive measure. Uh, and, um, um, and existence of invariant line fields is, uh, is equivalent of actually having some quasi conform possibility of quasi conformally deform um, your map on the Julia set. And uh, one of the approaches to rigidity to show that you, you actually have, do not have um, invariant line fields. And um, what we can show is that for the non renormalizable dynamically natural complex box mappings, invariant line fields exist in very specific situation. Namely, if F carries an invariant line field on its uh, field Julia set, then we can find a puzzle piece J uh, with some smooth foliation on it with the property that First of all, our, our Julia set fills whole uh, puzzle piece J. So it's a topological disk full of, um, of the Julia set um, uh, in terms of measure. And uh, the foliation is tangent to the invariant line field uh, almost everywhere on J. This is the first property. And second one is that if we start mapping forward this puzzle piece, 
then the critical points that our um, uh, this this orbit y intersects should be always strictly pre-periodic. In particular, uh, if we know that each puzzle piece contains an open set of escaping points, then uh, F carries no measure, uh, measurable invariant line fields. Because you cannot, if, if there are, there's an open set of escaping points, you cannot satisfy this, this property. And this is, in, in, in many instances, this is a property uh, that is easy to check. Because if you start constructing puzzle pieces using some internal rays, you always have some pieces uh, that are a parts that are in the Fatou set, and they have some open set, and which is not in the Julia set. And therefore, uh, this theorem applicable to many situations, um, which I will uh, discuss uh, shortly. Okay, um, and well, let me maybe be a little bit brief here. Uh, it is interesting to understand what are what are these maps uh, that do carry this invariant line field, and we call these maps lattice box mappings, and they indeed resemble the, the standard or classical uh, rational lattice maps, and um, in fact you can extract from from a, a rational lattice map a box mapping that follows by by some general result by uh, Pschetitsky and uh, Riviere Latel, but uh, in fact, you can do it by hand, and uh, here's actually a picture of, uh, of a latex uh, box mapping that uh, uh, we constructed just by, by hand using um, some, some Sierpinski carpet construction um, and um, some affine maps that, that preserves this line, horizontal line field. And then we can tweak it with some Riemann map and uh, arrange it so that in this diagram, we have a box mapping. But in this particular situation, uh, let me just point this out. Uh, there's a critical point here, zero, uh, uh, which maps here and uh, by design it is fixed. So you cannot make it uh, such that the, the critical orbit is infinite. It must be strictly pre-periodic as in the rational attest maps as well. If I have time, I'll, um, I can return to this example a little bit later. But uh, let me move on to, to the last uh, tool or, or result in our block, uh, black box. And this is a quasi-conformal rigidity for, for box mappings. And uh, this is a uh, well, theorem by uh, uh, Kozlovsky van Schrein, and uh, we discussed it also in our uh, recent work with uh, uh, Trevor and also Alec and Sebastian. And it says the following. Um, so in short, non-normalizable dynamically natural box mappings uh, that are combinatorial equivalent are QC conjugate. But uh, the, the uh, precise statement is the following. We have uh, a pair of non-normalizable dynamically natural box mappings. Well, assume that the boundaries of uh, our uh, sets U, uh, V, U tilde, and V tilde are piecewise smooth. And suppose there is a, there exists a QC homeomorphism between U um, between V and V tilde that maps U to U tilde, uh, which is equivalent on the boundary, so it respects dynamics on the boundary of U, and uh, most importantly, uh, F tilde is combinatorially equivalent to F with respect to this uh, quasi-conformal map H. What does it mean? It means roughly uh, the following. So you, um, so you want to map um, pieces, uh, 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 points uh, with the same itinerary with respect to puzzle pieces to uh, points with the corresponding itinerary. Uh, but you, since you, uh, you are in the complex world, you also need to encode some homotopy information and. Um, what I try to illustrate in this picture. So if this is F and this is F tilde, uh, and uh, well, each of these maps as U, V as one component and only two component of U uh, that are mapped over uh, component of, of over V. 
then we can encode pre-images. So we can encode uh, puzzle pieces, not only by depth, but also by, by some, uh, some sort of curves that track uh, which pre-images I take, right? Uh, you can see here are some, some starting set of curves and uh, this, is, this is their pre-images to depth, depth uh, uh, two. And uh, this, this combinatorial equivalence means that you preserve this information when you map it with H. Right, so th there's some information to preserve and uh, that is done by H. But if you have this, then um, your uh, F and F tilde are quasi conformally conjugate. And uh, this conjugation, well, it, it actually, it, it is extension of uh, H from uh, this uh, part of, uh, between V and U. Okay, so that was, uh, uh, yeah, uh, before, before I move on, uh, let me uh, also stress that, uh, well, this is uh, an unfugal theorem. And again, it uses this enhanced nest construction, um, which brings some something which is called a bounded geometry condition, some tool from um, conformal geometry, a QC criterion, and also a covering lemma. But this is actually uh, what we have in our, in our black box. Let me give you a strategy how to apply it. Um, uh, of course, if if I'm uh, if I were like a beginning uh, student, I will be given this strategy. Of course, I would hate a person who gave it to me because it may be not directly applicable. But this is this is a, a plausible, quite detailed, but still strategy. So what do you do? So you start with your dynamical system F, then you extract uh, or associate a box mapping that captures the most interesting part of your dynamics. For example, and in many examples, this is just uh, the case, you uh, construct F as a first return map to some certain nice neighborhood of a critical set. Well, then you check that uh, your F is dynamically natural. And uh, once you have this, well, then you have the results from the black box. And then you just embed uh, these results on rigidity and ergodicity back into uh, the dynamics of F. In fact, this is not so bad strategy in a sense. Um, this part is, uh, is specific to the situation. So in many cases, we know how to proceed. In many situations, these box mappings, they, they should be extracted sort of by hand. But once this step is done, you indeed in, 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 in the black box. So you can pick the result and most often it just uh, gives what you need for your original map app. Sometimes you have to add something, but uh, since you already have control over uh, most interesting part of the dynamics, everything else by, by definition is less interesting, hence it causes less troubles. Okay, and uh, when the strategy, uh, when can the strategy be successfully applied? And uh, I tried to collect the examples where this actually works. Uh, it was not originally maybe done by the authors, but uh, it can be modified so that it's a uniform and uh, can weigh or go along this, this strategy. So first of all, there is a series of results uh, for rational maps with totally invariant, infinitely connected for two component. Uh, so these are results of Yi and Yin and Brown and Hubbard conjecture, Yin and Zai on invariant line fields and Zai on some ergodicity properties. And, and this is an example, if you remember this yellow picture uh, from the beginning, uh, this is how you construct the box mapping. So in fact, this, this uh, infinite connectivity allows you to have this counter-like uh, box mapping, so to say. And then you can uh, just import the results uh, quite easily. Uh, second one, of course, that was uh, one of the uh, sort of starting points uh, are non-normalizable polynomials of arbitrary degree, but without neutral periodic points. And uh, for these guys, uh, well, uh, Kozlovsky and Funstein, they proved a quasi-conformal rigidity 
um, absorbs of invariant line fields and uh, duality of fibers, right? For polynomials, you do uh, standardly, you, you, you go with u cost puzzles. So you, you have uh, some landing rays at a fixed point, you pick an equipotential, and this is a forward invariant set. So you can pull it back. So it produces you actually um, finer, finer partition. And um, then you can actually pick puzzle pieces uh, that comprises a nice set and consider first original map. Of course, the key property is to check that you have this compact containment uh, for components of U inside V. That can be arranged. Um, actually, there are a couple of ways how to arrange it. But once it is done, then the uh, quasi this, this results just uh, follow from the toolbox. Um, and another result that can be done uh, in a similar fashion is uh, the result due to uh, Roche and Yin, who, who proved that uh, every um, the boundaries of um, bounded for two components of polynomials, they are locally connected. Well, except uh, we do not know what to do with Ziggle disks. So except Ziggle disks. And what do you do in this situation? In fact, you can also use rays, but for that you need to use uh, internal rays and external rays. So if this is your Fatou component, you can pick um, periodic internal rays and uh, pick periodic external rays that lens to the same points. Then you can uh, crop it all together with some equipotential and essentially these parts between rays and equipotential defines your partition of the first level. And then you start pulling it back. So that provides you a puzzle partition of the neighborhood of the Fatou set. And again, uh, you have critical orbits there. You can uh, consider a nice set containing this critical um, set and then take a first return map to that. And again, uh, run the machinery. Um, on the world of rational maps, there is a particular example where puzzles were constructed and uh, the results were proven uh, for so-called Macmillan maps. And these are maps of this form. Uh, so this is one parameter family of maps. And they have uh, infinity as a fixed point and uh, it has a basin uh, 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 B of infinity. Uh, and uh, uh, we one and in they prove that this basin is locally connected, provided that the Julia set is, is connected, uh, which in this situation means that the Julia set is a Sierpinski carpet Julia set. So, and uh, in that situation, the strategy also, also works. Of course, they, they made a non trivial first step. And this is, of course, as I, as I mentioned, uh, in each situation requires some additional input, how to construct puzzles. So they use the symmetry of the Sierpinski carpets to construct some sort of cut rays, um, but then and which which intersect the Julia set in, in uncountably many points. And uh, well, then you uh, can can uh, um, well you can construct uh, these pieces. And once it is done, you can induce a box mapping and uh, conclude actually that uh, the boundary is locally connected. Of course, um, again, using the black box. And uh, finally, maybe the largest class of rational maps for which we know how to use the strategy are Newton maps of polynomials uh, of arbitrary degree. And uh, so this is um, a project that uh, many people have been working on. And recently, Dirk and I were uh, finishing that. Um, so apart. Uh, in contrast to this example, where it is just one dimensional family, uh, here we're talking about actually full dimension of uh, Newton maps of polynomials. Uh, and um, again, the success was to do the first step in the strategy, how to construct puzzles. And let me outline this construction. Well, this is a slide that uh, reminds you what is a Newton map. So it's a root finding map, um, map that comes from the root finding methods with these uh, tangent lines. 
in the complex world, it's just uh, this rational map uh, where P is a polynomial, you define this rational map, and this is a map that wants to be iterated. And uh, the only fixed points of this map are infinity, which is a repellent fixed point, and the roots of polynomials. And these are attracting or super attractive fixed points. Well, as it should be expected, since it is a root finder. Uh, we know that uh, the Julia set is connected and the basins of infinite of, of roots are simply connected. And uh, this is a picture uh, that I keep uh, borrowing from uh, Dirk, uh, uh, John and uh, Scott. Uh, this is an example of degree seven Newton map uh, in the plane and on the Riemann sphere. And you can see all the colored uh, basins of roots. There's, uh, uh, seven of them, and uh, Dirk showed you this picture uh, earlier this week. And uh, the key structure that you should observe here is that this is uh, immediate basins of roots. They have directions to infinity, which well converge to infinity. And this is a place where we have very nice structure for Newton maps. And this is the starting point for puzzle pieces, because what you can do. You can start with the um, with the immediate basin. This is simply connected uh, the main, and you can map it. Uh, you can conjugate the dynamics there to just uh, uh, monomial dynamics, and uh, on the disk, and then you can pull back uh, fixed rays and equipotentials back to your uh, immediate basin, and in this way you obtain fixed rays that goes to infinity and provides uh, exactly the number of accesses to infinity within this immediate basin. Uh, then we can define what we call a channel diagram. This is the union of uh, fixed internal rays over all, uh, uh, over all uh, immediate basins of roots. And uh, so this is, this is a graph uh, that uh, has infinity as uh, it is a connected graph, and uh, moreover, it is forward invariant, and therefore, components of the full pre uh, components of the complement. If I take a full preimage of this graph, they will have this nice mapping property that um, uh, that that is needed. So, sort of, they they are nice in the mathematical sense, and these components are almost puzzle pieces. And why almost? Because we want puzzle pieces to be disks rather than uh, having some more com complicated topology. And the problem is that the full preimage of the channel diagram, if you take nth preimage of a uh, channel diagram, can be disconnected. And here's an example where it is disconnected. So this is uh, just the first preimage of a channel diagram. Uh, the channel diagram here is in thick black. And uh, when you take a full, uh, first preimage, then you will have uh, parts that will be connected to infinity. Uh, but you will also have some, some pieces that, that start growing from the preimage of infinity, which is a pole. And uh, a prior, this is not what, what we want, uh, because uh, that doesn't look like a puzzle piece. That's uh, several boundary components. But uh, it can be actually remedied. And uh, one of the key uh, results uh, that helps uh, is the result due to Jane Mikulic, Hannes Ruckert, and uh, Dirk, and myself, uh, which says that um, if we define what we call a Newton graph, and this is not the full preimage of the channel diagram, but it's connected component uh, that contains infinity. Right. This is a part that sort of grows out of infinity when we pull back. Then we prove that there exists a sufficiently large n so that this Newton graph of level n contains all poles of um, our Newton map. And this is good because if we have all poles, then the next full preimage will be connected because all the disconnected pieces, uh, they grow from the uh, from the pole, and since pole is already connect connected to infinity, then, then we have everything connected. So with that respect, this is a, um, a key result that allows to uh, pull back sufficiently 
a large number of times so that we actually arrive to what we call Newton puzzle pieces. And this is an example of, of uh, Newton puzzle pieces. As you can see here, they are indeed constructed by some equipotentials in the, in the basins of roots and some pieces of uh, prefixed rays. Uh, but uh, in fact, this is, uh, so this is good. And uh, that allows us to construct, um, uh, to have puzzle pieces to define nice sets. And as you remember, there's another problem that we should overcome is that if we take a first return map, then some of the components might not be compactly contained. And we need this property. Uh, for polynomials that can be arranged in, in some, some of the ways, in fact, uh, there, are, there are a couple of ways. Uh, for Newton maps, um, it should be done differently. And uh, this, this is what we call reality fibers at infinity, which is a result that allows to assure that we have this compact containment. So what we showed with uh, Russell Lodge, uh, Dirk and uh, Mike Savinsky is that we can arrange a puzzle partition of the starting depth so that um, the pieces that contains infinity. So in this uh, picture, this is a piece that contains infinity. This is a piece that contains infinity. Uh, well, this is a piece, this is a piece, and this is a piece that contains infinity. Um, so that um, this union of those pieces contains no critical values. In other words, critical values are contained in sort of bounded parts. And um, yeah, so this is, this is a, an example, uh, just what I outlined, but in colors. So we can arrange so that critical values are contained here and here. And which means that round infinity, we have no critical values. And if we pull back our partition, that will just shrink by, by some uh, Schwarz lemma uh, to a point, which is exactly to relative fiber at infinity. And if you look carefully, our puzzle partition is such that the puzzle boundary intersects the Julia sets, the, the Julia set at infinity or its preimages. And therefore, if we know what's going on at infinity, we basically know how the Julia, how our puzzle boundary intersects the Julia set. And this is a property that actually allows you allows us to um, uh, assure this compact containment consistently and uh, induce a dynamically natural box mapping. Okay, but once we have a dynamically natural box mapping, we, we are in business. So we have our black box and now we can just um, uh, import uh, from them, from this box. And uh, what we proved uh, uh, with Dirk is the following theorem, that if you have a Newton map of polynomial of degree D, then for every point um, in, in the Riemann sphere, exactly one of the following alternatives uh, hold. Holds. Um, either Z is in the uh, basin of um, attraction of root, uh, or that has a trivial fiber, or that belongs uh, to some, uh, or maps to some renormalizable dynamics. Again, uh, that means that we are either, um, we have as many problems as polynomials uh, in our rational world, or uh, we are trivial and we sort of know everything about our, uh, our dynamics. Um, I should mention that there was a, a related work. Uh, uh, Pascal Roche first proved this result for cubic Newton maps and uh, in, in, for arbitrary degree Newton maps independently, uh, Van Yin and Jen proved um, local connectivity of the boundaries of, of uh, roots. Um, so that was uh, for the dynamical rigidity, uh, in other words, about uh, shrinking of puzzle pieces. And uh, let me also mention that in this setup, it means that uh, uh, that uh, you're uh, at this point where you have triviality of fibers, your Julia set is locally connected, right? Because now you have global, global map and you can conclude about local connectivity. And since the Julia set of a Newton map is connected, 
Okay, and uh, the second result that I want to present, how to um, import from the box, uh, is about uh, Q-series generative for Newton maps. And for that, we need a, a definition of equivalence. And we say that uh, two Newton maps are uh, combinatorially equivalent if the Newton graphs coincide. So this is a bit cryptic, but uh, let me leave it for now, but uh, that at least should give you a flavor. So if, if this channel diagrams, their pullbacks have the same structure for both maps, then we have um, combinatorial equivalence. And what we can prove that if we start with two combinatorial equivalent Newton maps, then they are quasi conformally conjugate in a neighborhood of the Julia set, well, provided they either both non-renormalizable or they're both renormalizable in the same way. And this is a part where uh, we should say a little bit more. So what does it mean? It means that uh, there's a bit bijection between the domains of renormalization. So this, this embedded little Jule assets, they are embedded. Um, uh, so there's a bijection between them and they embedded sort of in the same combinatorial position with respect to the uh, Newton graph. Uh, and they, well, this is not um, uh, not that a difficult concept, just take some word into to phrase. Since our renormalization is defined using puzzle pieces, which are constructed using Newton graphs, is it to see how you can, what, what, what conditions you have to assure that uh, they have the same combinatorial position. Um, and moreover, uh, if uh, the Newton maps are uh, postcritically finite in the root basins, uh, which is uh, not hard to uh, arrange, um, uh, then uh, the, uh, these uh, Newton maps are actually a fine conjugate. And this is actually a part where we use uh, absence of invariant line fields. So here, this assumption kills very natural place for conformal deformation. Right? In this attracting uh, basins, we cannot control them, so they should be the same, but all the rest is, is rigid. So once we kill this, this, this freedom, uh, then uh, we are fine conjugate. And well, there's a, uh, the, the, there was a related uh, parallel work by Roshin and Zhen, uh, who proved um, GDT for non randomizable Newton maps um, without, of course, using uh, black boxes. Okay, so uh, this is this is uh, an example how how you can actually start with with having puzzle partition, then you uh, use uh, the results from the black box, uh, our results on box mappings to to uh, conclude uh, rigidity properties for uh, for your family of maps. And uh, let me finish with uh, two things. One is uh, a takeaway, and this is uh, a very nice philosophy on rigidity. And um, I already uh, repeat what uh, Duke was uh, saying on um, uh, earlier this week. Um, so let me start with, well, there are two ways how you can think about rigidity, dynamical rigidity and parameter rigidity. We discussed uh, dynamical rigidity, we discussed both of them actually. So with, we say that a holomorphic map is rigid if one can distinguish in combinatorial terms, for example, via, via symb symbolic dynamics, all orbits of uh, our map F. And uh, parameter rigidity means that uh, our family of holomorphic maps is rigid if uh, combinatorial equivalence implies quasi conformal conjugacy. And Philosophy and rigidity, and this is what uh, Dirk calls, and uh, I after him calls rational rigidity principle, says that um, uh, in, in the dynamical way, uh, in the dynamical rigidity part, uh, a rational map is either rigid or contains an embedded polynomial dynamics. So in terms of dynamics, the only missing bits are what come in from polynomials and rational maps do not bring anything new, uh, conceptually new. And parameter rigidity says that while well, a family of maps is rigid, provided that it contains no embedded polynomial dynamics, 
uh, uh, or this uh, dynamics uh, are embedded in the same way. In other words, failure for, for rigidity comes from, from some embedded polynomial pieces. And uh, we saw that this philosophy is in fact theorem for Newton maps. Uh, well, it is a theorem also for polynomials, less, less interesting, of course. Uh, but uh, we believe that this is, this is more than that. And, um, and uh, this idea of having the, the black box actually is a way how to extend this philosophy to larger classes of rational maps. And uh, finally, since we are, um, uh, this is more related to transcendental dynamics, let me finish with the final question for today. And the question is open-ended because I do not know the answer. And the question is, is there a general procedure that associates an non-trivial complex box map into a transcendental, well, for example, entire function and even what we can assume with a non-empty for two set? I don't know, but it would be great to know. And if such objects do exist, then again, we're in business. Uh, we have a black box, which we can use. And for that, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Kostya, for a very nice talk. Are there any questions or comments? Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, so in the philosophy part, you mentioned the general rational maps. So other than the Newton's map or Lattes map, uh, what will be the strategy to con extract the box mappings? Are there some hope that you have some strategy to construct? Um, well, I see the, the strategy. So you might hope if you have uh, enough uh, for two components uh, that are touching, like in the, uh, in the Newton case, so the, the, uh, pop, uh, the puzzle pieces for Newton maps were constructed because you have many touching for two components. So if you can start with, with uh, enough uh, touching for two components, then you uh, may try to use some sort of internal race, right? And, and this is one of the ways I can see if, 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 if there are such for two components. But of course, uh, the another extreme, there are no touching for two components at all for Sierpinski carpets, as um, uh, Julia said. And in that case, it, is, uh, it would be interesting. So the result that I mentioned so far, the only known result uh, for, for, for those kind of maps, and it heavily uses the symmetry of the Sierpinski carpet that, uh, that, is, um, uh, that is in this McMullen family. And uh, if one can construct using some symbolic dynamics, some rays that cut this Julia set in, in a nice way, then, um, then there, is a, there is a hope. But for now, the Sierpinski part is, is uh, mysterious. Mm. Any other quick question? I have one question. You mentioned earlier that the number of ergodic components of a uh, box map is bounded by the number of critical points. Yeah. Can you be more specific in saying that every component needs its own critical point, like we have in some other cases? Yeah, yes. Uh, yes, yes, you can be specific. So you can um, indeed um, say that uh, each ergodic component has its own um, uh, critical point. That seems to me a stronger result, a more, somewhat yeah. more conceptual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, um, um, yeah, this is, this is in a resemblance with this uh, Fatou uh, Shishikura uh, uh, injection type results when, when you can associate to uh, each non-repelling periodic cycle um, its own uh, uh, critical point. I mean, well, even I mean, even that's tricky to say. I mean, in the in the Kramer case, so I don't know how far the theory has developed since what Kiwi did for polynomials. Maybe that's been pushed, or maybe that's sufficient. Um, well, uh, in right, fact, uh, uh, this is something that I you can reduce mention. to that. 
um, we can, uh, for example, uh, we can prove it for Newton maps. I mean, this Fatusha Shikura injection result, we can prove it for Newton maps. Exactly. But I mean, there's, there's, I mean, there's natural construction. It's not just you know, according to uh, Fatusha theorems. This is actual construction with the partition. That I mean, because before Kiwi had done that, it was an open question. And I guess it's isn't it? I thought it was still an open question for rational maps in general. It's, it's saying it's, it no longer is. Well, uh, it is true for, for Newton maps. And a, again, using this uh, strategy. Okay, for Newton maps, I see. Yeah. Okay, so you, you, can't, you can't say it in general. So, okay, I mean, presumably it's, it's in what you said, but what, what, is it, what is it that you can't do more generally uh, to prove that result, if you wanted to prove that result? Just the Fatou-Shishikur injection. Uh, So do you want to approve it for for arbitrary rational map? Uh, well, I'd like to show we'd like to I'd like to show that for arbitrary rational map, um, uh, you know, in some appropriate sense, each non-compelling cycle eats a critical point, and this sense should include the fact that that the critical points associated to, to distinct cycles are 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 are, are dis, disjoint. It is not clear how you how you would so what what are the separation. Oh, you would, uh... There's a separate, okay. So, I mean, okay. it's been many years for me, right? I mean, I, there's the Kiwi separation result, which the theorem, which is the first result in the area. And I believe that that essentially, I mean, that, that was maybe designed to uh, take care of the case for polynomials. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. then ever well, since we can, then, we... it's... So... Yeah. Sorry? I oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, this and, has, and, I mean, this has been, been extended to entire it's, it's certainly been, that... yeah. It's certainly been extended in to class B. Yeah, yeah, yeah I should the, say that. The it's problem is with rational, functions. with rational and meromorphic. The problem is the separation, right? I mean, how do you separate yeah. from how the components? Set because so there, guess... there is not the analog of rays, and and then yeah. the separation is crucial for this injection to work somehow. I mean, I believe that something could be done, but uh, it's not. I mean, right now it's open. I think. Well, but somehow the combinatorics of Newton's maps allow you to. Uh... Yeah, well, it allows us actually. That doesn't work in all cases, but in some, it's first the developing decomposition theory of some rational maps into to Sapinski like components and Newton like components. Oh, okay. Let me put it this way Is it, this, it's something that you read off a posteriori rather than a priori, yes? I mean, if you have a map that, that, that you can apply this analysis to, then. Then you know that either you know everything you don't know, you can hand off to the Department of Polynomials. The Department of Polynomials knows Kiwi separation theorem, and then you're done. But you, you're but you're but you're not claiming that you'll learn, really learn anything new, uh, uh, or provide anything new about the separation at the moment, or are you? Are you, are you basically saying that you can extend that result in all cases where you could reduce to that result? Um, yeah, the second. Yeah. Okay. Right, and then what Nuri is saying is that if you allow the move to transcendental, then there are further transcendental cases where such a result holds, and then you know conceivably one could try to reduce certain meromorphic things to certain entire things, you know, in a nightmare or whatever, but <laughs> in a dream or a nightmare. But my speculation or wishful thinking about rational maps is that the more difficult part about rational maps are the combinatorial setups in the first step. And once you've done it, the analytic difficulties that you encounter, you can package off into this black box and send this to the Department of Polynomials. And you mean, you mean Stony Brook? But <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it means. I mean, do you have, is there any notion of what, a, I mean, is it even reasonable to hope that there might be a, a universal enough combinatorics that you could set up to prove this in, in, in general no. or? Or you just, I mean, it's I just case think. by case and then people run out of uh, energy. Polynomials, Newton, there's a couple of basic classes where, where you know, you stare at enough pictures, you can get a foothold. Well, uh, one can speculate. Um, so the, the, the big question, can you handle Sierpinski carpet uh, situation mm -hmm. universally? But if, suppose you can, uh, then what Dirk was mentioning, there, there are results that allows you to decompose uh, rational maps into 
uh, Serpinski in, into uh, uh, return maps, which are Serpinski-like maps, which are Serpinski maps, and uh, the other parts are Newton-like. So the other parts has, has many touching photo components for which you can hope to, to run some, some sort of uh, this internal race and pulling them back. And you can edit, well, this, this uh, uh, wishful hope that we can do for Serpinski, and then you can glue them using this decomposition. I mean, so far this decomposition is, is done in a postcritically finite case, but uh, there is a hope, uh, at least a um, wish to, to extend it. Well, it's stable under perturbation. So it works in certain neighborhoods of post-critically finite maps. So at least it applies in some post-critically infinite settings. It's not clear, it's throughout parameter space, but there are post-critically infinite cases where it does make sense. Right. Okay, so uh, sorry to interrupt. Um, we're really running behind schedule. So if we can continue the discussion later and can we all please unmute ourselves and thank Kosti for a great talk.